everyone. It is I, Lady Heather, and it is day four of my Lady Heather Oween art celebration. I, in today's tutorial, I will be going ahead, continuing working on my Tempest, Gothy of the Crypt. You can purchase this illustration in my online shop. I'll post the link below in the description for you if you want to go ahead and get her and color along with me. Today, we're going to be working more on the background, some candles and getting in a lot of... Um, the base color layers in the coffin, and then tomorrow on day five, we'll be finishing up this ghoulish gothy. So we're gonna be working with the King Arts Mixed Media uh, Gel Sticks again. I have a set of 48, I have my palette, I have my brush. We may even use a little bit bigger brush today since we're gonna be covering a wider area. Uh, these are cosmetic brushes that you can buy on Amazon for just a few dollars. I, and I have my scratch sheet of uh, paper so I can go ahead and try the colors on before if I need to. Anywho, I'm going to go ahead and grab my tan and my yellow. And I'm going to go ahead and put this a little bit on my palette. And a little bit of the lemon yellow, real close. I'm going to kind of mix these two together, a little more of that tan together. Now you can see here on the wing, that outer wing, we had already gone ahead and did the highlight for this candle. So I'm kind of going to make an imaginary circle, if you would, here. And I'm just going to fill in this imaginary circle. So I have it there with the light. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger actually. There. So I now know that we have this nice glow from this candle. There we go. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. And this is just a base color, okay? Kind of just setting in, letting you know that this is where this light, there was a chunk of pigment there, we don't want that, uh, is reflecting onto. This does not mean that we cannot put more color on it with the base colors, but right now we do see uh, two of our light sources. And I'm going to go ahead and expand this just a little bit. Get that nice old, good old candle glowing. And of course, there would be just a tad on the skull. Just a little bit. Matter of fact, I'm gonna grab some more of this tan and I'm gonna lay in some more of that skull color. I'm just gonna give a really a once over on the skull and a little bit on the bones. Nothing too solid, just kind of throwing on some color there. There we go, like so. And I'm not going to be working on her outfit or her boots or her horns today. That's going to be uh, part of my finishing details tomorrow. So, go ahead and get that off. So now we see where our beautiful glows are. That silver, I'm going to go ahead and get my palette around here a little bit. This is gray. Now, for those of you who have seen the first tutorial uh, to this, which would have been on October 1st, um, you would have seen that uh, I'd like to let the King's Art set up for about 24 hours. So that way we can go ahead and um, it's kind of uh, cured, if you would. So there's no problem in laying your hand or anything like that on that. 
I'm going to go ahead and lay down a generous amount of this gray because we have a big area here to uh, cover. And should you want to continue working, you know, you can always, instead of, you know, letting things cure, okay, you can always go ahead and lay your paper on it and continue on. But I really don't want to do that until after that 24 hour, hour time period when that paint or the gel sticks, I should say, has time to um, set up, if you want to say. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of this gray and this will probably take a few times I'm gonna get this gray laid on onto the background here I'm really not worried about my taped areas because when this is done should I want to frame it I'll use a mat board and that'll all be covered up so All right now, why don't I do this so you can see. I'm gonna remove the tape since we have the image laying down. But otherwise, if I was gonna keep it working on my easel, I have no problem, um, like I said, just putting a mat about a quarter of an inch around it if I was gonna frame this. So let me go ahead and get this. Watch out for your paint chunks, or your pigment chunks, I should say. And this is just really a, a smoky gray. These are really, really easy to use. And great for quick, easy backgrounds, especially, like I said, if you have hand elements. I have MS, so sometimes coloring or painting, drawing even, in fact, is, is difficult for me on days. And these gel sticks make it really easy. They're easy to apply, easy on my hands, which means less pain, and I can go ahead and color longer or paint longer. And that's really, really, really important to me. Now, when you get to that yellow that we laid down, I want to kind of blend it in to that area, okay? So it's just not like, whoa, a really sharp yellow blend. I want that to haze around there like so. So now you see there's that glow and it's bouncing off onto that gray. I do not care if this gray right now is hitting into the bricks. And I'm really not too concerned about it being a perfect, flawless blend. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking that this is either concrete or some other kind of cold, damp building material. Maybe the wall is like stucco with like moss and fungus on it. You know, this is an old, old castle she's sitting in. I mean, she's, you know, the undead. I mean, she's a tempest of the gothy. She likes dark places like this, at least in my mind. And I'm going to get some more of this. So I want it to, to not be perfect. You want to have, um, you know, more mystery to, to your piece. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing over here. I'm not really worried if it gets onto that molding. And that snoring is none other than my 14 year old Shih Tzu, AKA Bellarina, or I should say Bella, AKA Bellarina is her full name. It never fails. Whenever I'm doing any kind of tutorials, there's my girl snoring. But at her age, I guess she's allowed to do whatever she wants, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much at any age, she was allowed to do whatever she wants. 
I have three Shih Tzus. I have a 20 year old, 20 year old and six, a 20 year and six month year old uh, Shih Tzu named Leo. And I also have a seven year old uh, little girl named Lilybug. She's the tiniest of my Shih Tzus. She's like the diva of all of them. Bella's more like a tomboy. And Leo, well, Leo's just Leo. <laughs> but nobody snores like my Bella. <laughs> I guess she figured we needed like some sleeping um, zombies or mummies in the background and she's playing that part. And if you have pets, a little disclaimer, make sure you keep your art supplies and gel sticks away from your pets. If it comes out a little dark in one area, just work it out. Now remember, these gel sticks can be used with uh, water. You put it on your palette, add a little bit of water and apply it. Right now for this piece, I really want the more dreamier pastel look, and I guess dreamy is the wrong word for a Halloween piece. The more spookier, softer, there we go, effect. More of a texture than a watercolor piece. Okay, and don't worry right now if it looks like it's really too close, that stained glass window, we're not done. We haven't even put in our molding or anything yet. So all in good time, my pretties, all in good time. <laughs> yeah, I know. Come Halloween, I have to get in the spirit of things, my voices and stuff. <sighs> you have to have fun during the Halloween season and pretty much throughout life. You will, the more you watch my tutorials and learn more about me and that, you will discover I am really, as, uh, as some say, very quirky. <laughs> hey, but it's all like I said about having the fun. All right. Now that we got that gray on here, we're gonna switch to a different color. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab some iron. This is a little, let me see. This is what happens when you add it to the paper, by the way. It just doesn't blend out as nice. It's got this kind of brownish gray vibe to it which is kind of what I'm looking for. And I want to go ahead, I'm going to darken up some of these areas. Like I said, I'm not too worried if it goes into the bricks here, because we're going to cover those up. I'm just doing one step at a time here. A little bit darker in this wall area here. And you can see that it blends really, really well with the gray that we've already laid down. And we really want to concentrate, too, on the under part of these bricks. Not all of them, just in some areas. And a bit around that molding like so. And I'm gonna go right up into that brick because I'm gonna create this shadow here with this. I 
and you can see how it's getting that more creepy effect as we build up each of these layers. So again, this is really a lot why I like working from light to dark. The ability to, to build up on, on the layers and play with the colors. But yet I know a lot of colorists and artists out there who do it in the complete opposite, that, that uh, dark to light who can create, you know, some amazing effects. This is just my personal preference. And I've done dark to light before. I'm going to blend that out. I'm going to go ahead and flip over this piece. There's nothing wrong with flipping over your piece, too, while you're working. Because it gives your eye a whole total different perspective of your work. And there might be something you see in this angle that you might have missed in the other angle. So I do encourage you while you're working to really play with, you know, spinning your paper and seeing various angles and so forth. I'm going to get a little more of that iron. This is, of course, further away from the light, so it's going to get darker and darker. And you can see I'm holding on to, to the edges or to the area that I don't have colored. Remember, work off your paper not on to your paper when you're doing the edges like that. Oh, there we go, I'm on my palette. And the same thing here. Whoop, pigment chunk. I mean, in no time at all, we're just, you know, creating this really, really gothic-like wall. You can find these King Arts uh, gel sticks on Amazon, also on their website. Um, I highly recommend these. I really, really do. They are truly an amazing product. And if you do have pigment chunks over on your palette, make sure that you, uh, you know, blend them in really good. Scrub, scrub. Get them into that brush so you don't have any oopsies. You can see how that gray, like I said, mixes in with this iron really, really nice. A little more of that color. Oh yeah, like so. And I said, you know, we have this nice texture really appearing on this wall, which really makes it quite creepy and mysterious and dark and eerie, and all that yummy goodness that happens at this time of year. Yes, Halloween is one of my favorite holidays, that and Christmas. All right, now we're gonna flip it around.
like so. I'm going to get a little more. I want it a little darker here on the sides. Make sure your hands are clean. And this is another way of protecting the piece that you have down. You know, you're over your coloring, lay a piece of paper over it so you have a bigger area too to grab a hold of, like you can see what I'm doing. So you're not uh, transferring, in case you have any of this pigment onto your hand, you're not doing it onto that colored area that you work so hard at doing. Apply a little more over here. Oh, yeah. And you can see how the darker walls are pushing back and that stained glass is, that light is really, you know, coming through that stained glass now. So I'm going to work a little bit more of that gray over here. Like that. I'm going to go ahead and grab, what is this, light brown? Like that. This is dark brown. A little bit of that. Can I just dust off? or wipe off my brush there on that piece of paper. I'm gonna pick up some of this. Very carefully so I don't transfer any of that into the stained glass. I'm just gonna lay a base coat of this molding decorative molding. Like so. Get the lighter brown here. I'm not too worried about, like I said, getting it in that candle area. There we go. I'm going to flip it over here. Being very careful not to get it on that window. And as you can see, I'm, I'm dipping into both colors, that light and dark brown. So I'm creating, you know, a base layer of effects, that texture of that wood. And we go over it with the color pencils. Gonna get my paper so I can hold it down. Like so. See, like that, and we're bringing out like the red in her hair and that into that molding. So we're tying this piece all together very nicely and very easily. I have to lay down some more of this pigment. Get my dark brown. And my light brown again. Like so. I'm going to go ahead and lay my paper over that. Watch that stained glass window now. And as you can see, it really doesn't matter if I hit that, that 
gray that we were using on the wall onto my wood because it's going to be covered up. Plus that little bit creates a nice shadow already down there. Mm -hmm. So like so. And I'm going to be really careful about her wing bone there or whatever you call it. <laughs> that part of the, this, this like long, hard part of her wing. Got a pigment crumble there. I call it a type of bone and I think it is a type of bone. Okay. Like so. Go back in here on this side. A little darker up here. We're away from that light. And we'll balance all that out all in good time with, you know, our colored pencils. I'm going to go ahead and lay down some more of that light brown. I think that's light brown. What did I grab? No, just brown. Oh boy. Okay, and I'm also going to grab my light brown. And, oh, this is gold metallic. I'm going to go back to that tan. And let's pay attention to these reflections here. We do have a little bit of yellow here. I There's going to be a little glow of light, and that's why I didn't choose the yellow. I chose the tan. And I want to go ahead and, yeah, I have some of my light brown in there from before because I didn't wash off my brush. I wanted to color. You can see how that tan is still there. Oh, there's a chunk of that. I want to pick up some of this brown. work around her boots, a little bit of that shadows here. Watch out for that pigment. Work around that bone. Back to that light. Like I said, this is just the base coloring. I'm go up a little bit on the skull with that dark down here. Go ahead. Be careful around that skull. And this doesn't have to be perfect. There is no, um, you don't want this even on this wood, okay? When we go over it with the colored pencils and lay in the fine details and the nooks and crannies and stuff, you're not going to see the, the major gradations here in the sum of this. It's just about getting pigment on to the area. Now we will not be going over the wall with colored pencil for the majority of it. We will be on the bricks and so forth. But on the coffin, yeah, a lot of colored pencil work. Okay. I mean, so look, you can really see the pieces really now tying together nicely here. I'm going to go back to that iron. Go 
Get a nice chunk of that on there. Be careful around her leg. I don't want to have it with the same color of the coffin. I want it darker so that you can tell there's something there. It's just not the coffin going up the back of that wall. And fade it just into there, into that light like so. It's all right if I get a little bit on the floor there. I'm not too worried about that. But now you can see, now she's, it's, it's got the molding and stuff in there. Watch out for that bone, to that coffin, and to that bone. To her wing. See, like so. I'm going to take a little bit of that iron going to go back into that coffin and you can see now how I'm applying the shadows doing base colors like this and other medias such as markers, like the gel sticks, which we're using, it cuts down on the colored pencil time also, if that's what you're gonna top it off with colored pencils. But it, it really does. And you can get some nice effects doing it this way. Kind of work it in there like so. Go ahead and get that iron on this side. Now remember, I did not wash out my brush. I didn't want to wait for it to thoroughly dry and I didn't want to apply a damp brush onto this because I, I want this, this effect. I don't want a watercolory effect to it. I'll lay in the shadow here, like so. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to grab that light brown. And I'm going to grab a little bit of scarlet. And some more of that iron. Dip it into that light brown, a little bit of that red. And now I'm going to come back real soft like and add a little bit to these bricks. Just a hint. We'll fine tune it with the colored pencils. And not every brick needs to be the same color. You want variety. Bricks are all individual. Some can be lighter in some areas. Get a little bit of that red. I want this brick to be a little more red down here. A little brown on this one. And this is adding that character to it.
Okay, like so. Okay. And now, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my ruler. And on the original piece, I did not draw in a floorboard. And something like this, I would consider a background. I would have no problem with you not altering the whole entire piece, but drawing in a floor, that is not a problem. I'm gonna go ahead and mark this off at about an inch, about two and a half there. And I'm gonna do this on the same side. Flip this piece around. Make sure here where I did that, an inch, there we go. Lightly with a pencil, and two and a half. And I'm gonna go ahead and match up the lines. And lightly, go ahead and draw that in. The closer you are, the bigger the squares are going to be. Okay. And let's see. This is nine inches. So, one, three, five, seven, nine. I think that'll work. Hmm. Let's go Okay, and I want to go ahead Put a one and a half here. I'm just going to draw that on my glass there. Like so. And now we have the floor tiles, like so. And we can come on in that's kind of silvery. Oop. Grab the wrong one. I'm gonna grab the gray. And I'm going to scrub this brush out really, really good. You know, I'm going to do that. Let me see. I really like this um, brush. I want to make sure I have this clear shot with the gray. And I'm going to go ahead it's okay if it picks up a little bit of the brown in each of the corners. Like on the oddball corners, every other one. Just put a little bit of that gray 
It's all right if it goes into the others because that's going to be a darker area. Okay, we have this nice checkerboard effect going on here, which we're going to turn that more into like cobblestones, almost, or big kind of like 12 by 12 tiles. And you're not going to see those pencil lines, but I do recommend going in kind of light with that, though. This is just giving you a guide. Okay, every other one. And up here, the same thing. It's all right if you go up into that yellow, you gotta get that floor down like so. Okay, so instead of applying the uh, colored pencils over it right this second and using my blender stick, I'm going to go ahead and let this set out for about 24 hours, and we will finish this piece off tomorrow with her uh, horns and boots and outfit and floor. We are really close to the end here. Um, I hope you're liking this. I can't wait. Uh for you to send me pictures of your results on this piece. I hope you're having as much fun coloring this as I am. And uh, until tomorrow, have a good day. Bye-bye.